Well, I just got my new iPhone 12, and it means I gotta send back the iPhone 10 for a trade in. So let's go do that and talk about all these new cameras that are coming out. So once again, we're at a point where all these new cameras have come out and, you know, just like in years past, it makes me want to go buy a new camera. That's how I ended up switching from Canon to Sony before. I just, I need to put on my seatbelt. I'm breaking the law here. Hold on. All right. That's better. Much better. We're not lawbreakers here. I just always was chasing the, chasing the dragon as some people might call it. Well, we're at that point again. We've got the new Canon cameras are out the new Sony a7S III, the a7C, which got me thinking exactly what happened last time. I bought a new camera, started doing uh, videos with it and was shocked to find out that my videos didn't get a lot better just because I bought a new camera. They didn't get better because the problem isn't the camera, the problem is just your creativity. I hadn't really maximized the potential of the cameras I had before I felt like, well, if I go buy a new camera, I can do all this stuff. But you gotta ask yourself, have you maximized the potential of the camera that you currently own? And honestly, I haven't even really done a lot with this a7 III as far as for videos. I've done a lot of photography with it and made some money with it. For video, I haven't really realized its potential, I guess is the best way to talk about it. And I'm immediately thinking I need to get the a7S III because it's so much better. And the answer to should you buy a new camera is always a resounding yes. By me getting the a7S III, are my videos gonna get much better? Or should I just really learn to maximize this camera and make better videos with it? That's really the question we have now. I'm filming this in S-Log2. It might look like a bucket of shit, but I haven't even learned to use S-Log2 and expose it properly. So am I really ready to buy another camera when I haven't even done that yet? And do you need S-Log2? That's the other question you gotta ask yourself. With S-Log2 requires color grading, color correcting. Are you willing to put in the time to learn to color correct and color grade? And do you even really want to put that time in? Because if you don't, is there really a need to, to change the camera? That 10-bit beefier codec that's in the A7S III is kind of wasted if you don't, if you don't wanna use it to its maximum potential. My arm's getting tired. Is this a flattering angle? Or is this a very poor angle? I don't know. All right, here we are at the UPS store. Gonna go turn this bad boy in and uh, I'll be right back. All right. Got my receipt and got the iPhone sent back. So I'll get my credit. All right, so this is my first shot with the uh, S-Log, S-Log 2. Well, actually, it's not my first shot. It's, it's gonna be my first successful video with S-Log 2. I realize it's a little tougher, but you know, maybe I should at least get the maximum potential out of the camera, and I haven't done it. I also feel like I could learn so much more with editing, lighting, and a lot of things that really won't improve if I buy a new camera. So maybe it's better to invest my money in my time. I guess what I'm trying to say is money's not the best thing to invest. Maybe time's the better thing to invest. Spend more time making videos. Spend more time learning to edit better. Uh, and if you do spend some money, maybe spend it on some of the, the less sexy accessories, the lighting, you know, things like that, filter, stuff that's not as, as fun and cool as buying a brand new camera. And then now we got we got this thing, the, the, the iPhone, I got the 12 Pro here, and allegedly, allegedly this, this camera is the greatest thing ever. And uh, spoiler alert, I'll, I'll probably make a video comparing this to my, my little ZV-1 that I, that I use all the time, because I think that's more of a fair comparison, but it's the best smartphone camera I've ever used but it's not better than this, and it, it's not better than a regular camera. Maybe, I guess it depends on your usage, but subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out because I'm gonna make a video about it. All 
right, so I talked about why you shouldn't upgrade, but maybe you want to. Why should you upgrade? That's what we need to talk about next. Why should you upgrade? Well, if you've reached the maximum potential or if there's some specific feature that you need on that new camera, well, maybe then it's not such a bad idea to upgrade. One of the main features that makes me want to upgrade is the flip screen. It's just because now I've got this little mirror gimmick on top and it's it's a real pain in the butt. It makes the footprint a lot bigger. That, that's one of the reasons. Another potential reason for me to want to upgrade is because of the uh, the higher bit rates and the 10-bit the colors. I'm one of the people I enjoy color grading and color correcting and, and just applying all those kind of things to, to my footage. So if that's something that you enjoy doing, maybe that's a reason to upgrade. So another potential reason for you to upgrade is if you need 120 frames a second in 4K. So for me, where that comes in handy is I do a lot of videos, uh, sports and exercise videos, and it's always a lot of action. And occasionally I want to slow the action down. Well, I always have to end up going down to 1080 for that. And it loses a little bit of resolution. The, the 4K 120, that's, if that's something that you're gonna use a lot and make it worthwhile, that's probably a good reason to upgrade. And another reason for me to upgrade, or for anybody to upgrade, is uh, the stabilization. So the a7 III that I'm shooting on now, it has, whoa, oh my God. Uh, the a7 III has got um, the IBIS, but let's be honest, it's not very good. This footage is shaky as shit. The a7S III has IBIS and active uh, steady shot and it has that gyro stabilization you can do uh, with catalyst browse after it just takes a while to render it but if that's the only thing you need if you don't need the 4k 120 and you don't need the advanced color science the a7c just came out smaller form factor and it also has the gyro stabilization so that's an option too for you and would you look at that free stress test uh oh I just realized that's a <laughs> Scientology church and I think I should probably get out of here. They were looking at me funny through the window. How's that stabilization? A7 III. Is it bad? This is an unstabilized lens, by the way. I'm using the Tamron 17 to 28 to get this footage, and it's not bad. Well, I don't know if it's bad or not yet, let's be honest. I guess in the end what it comes down to is what are your needs, and have you reached the maximum potential for your camera already? I guess you got to ask yourself that. I know for me, some of some of my needs would be met by getting the camera, and I eventually will get it, but also, I still have a lot of room to grow with this camera, and I need to explore everything that this camera offers, and, and that's probably what I'm going to do for a while now, is, is really figure out the maximum potential of this camera, and learn to use S-Log better, just, just learn everything, and become a better creator with the camera that I have, versus running out and buying the new camera that I really don't need to buy yet. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you're going to buy a new camera and what needs it fills and why you made the decision to go ahead and upgrade now if you've already reached your potential or if there's something I missed in here. Let me know. <laughs>